we are live. Oh, hold on one second. Catching up on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay, we are live. Uh, welcome to um, our first kind of live in implementation of um, talking about films here at the Moab um, Museum for Film and Western Heritage. We focus on films that have been made in the Moab to Monument Valley area. And today we're going to be talking about a cult classic and one of my personal favorites, um, Vanishing Point. There's actually two Vanishing Points, one from 1971, the original, and 1997, the remake, um, both of which had scenes that were filmed in this area. And so they are part of our scope in our museum. And so today that's what we're going to talk about and I'm super excited to share a lot of information with you. Um, what we're going to start off by talking with is just give you a little brief overview of um, the themes that our museum focuses on. So we just talked about the general region of Moab to Monument Valley and what we covered there. It's really southeastern Utah, that corner. Um, but beyond that, the themes that we kind of talk about when we talk about what is Western heritage, right? We can talk about cowboys as being part of Western heritage, but Western heritage is actually so much more than that. And so some of the things that we talk about here at the museum uh, pertaining to Western heritage are indigenous cultures. Um, we talk about the pattern of transportation. The West could not have been settled without horses and stagecoaches and wagons and trains and of course later on some individual vehicles like muscle cars which we're going to talk about later. Um, we also talk about you know huge theme whether you're talking about cowboys or just western heritage in general we talk about outlaws and law enforcement and that's going to be another huge theme um, in our discussion today and comes out really um, strongly in Vanishing Point. Um, both of them. Other other themes that we talk about when we talk about Western heritage are things like natural resources and just the importance of Southwestern landscape um, in storytelling. We also like to talk about autonomy and independence and everyone who thinks of the West automatically thinks of freedom, the land to roam, right? And do what you want and be who you want to be. And that kind of autonomy and freedom is definitely um, hit upon in the Vanishing Point films. So that's really what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, again, there's some themes of indigenous cultures, themes of transportation, definite themes of outlaw and law enforcement, and themes of autonomy. Um, so that's kind of what we focus on here at the museum. Now let's start to talk about Vanishing Point. But before we even get there, I want to stop, talk really briefly about the idea or the, the period in American history where, where alcohol was outlawed. So let's talk about prohibition. Um, prohib and we're just talking about in general in American history right now, not necessarily in the West. But in general, in American history, when um, out, alcohol was outlawed during Prohibition era, um, what happens, of course, when things get outlawed, um, they go underground, they become illegal, they go to the black market. And so when alcohol um, was outlawed in Prohibition, we of course had moonshiners who were making distilled booze out of their home distilleries. And we had, um, bootleggers who were selling those. We had moonshiners and we had bootleggers. And the way that moonshiners and bootleggers kind of survived during this period was by souping up their vehicles so that they could outrun law enforcement. So boom, automatically here you'll notice that we're starting to talk about that law enforcement and outlaw theme, right? And so that was really kind of the start of, as a lot of you will know, the start of NASCAR and um, how we got into car chases and car races as part of our American heritage um, in our blood. And really, um, the first film that talked about that kind of stuff and dealt with souped up cars was in 1958, a movie called Thunder Road, and it starred Robert Mitchum. Um, he also 
co-wrote and sang the theme song for the film um, Thunder Road. Thunder Road was not filmed in the Moab to Monument Valley area, but it's an important film to note because it was one of the very first that actually put the idea of car chases into American film. And so definitely notable there. So that was 1958 Thunder Road. Um, a decade later, 1968, Bullet comes out with Steve McQueen driving a 68 Mustang. He was his own driver doing his own stunts in the film. Um, there was a couple chargers in the movie as well. And Bullet really started the genre of American muscle cars and car chases going on. Um, so that was 1968, and that one's another critical movie. Again, not made in the Moab's Monument Valley area, but still a critical one for talking about film history in American um, culture. So 1968 was Bullet. Three years later, in March of 1971, Vanishing Point comes out. And Vanishing Point um, stars Barry Newman. Cleavon Little is also... Um, kind of the co-star in that film. A lot of you may recognize Cleavon Little from Blazing Saddles, which is a great cowboy movie, one of my favorites actually. Um, so Cleavon Little and Barry Newman starred in 1971's Vanishing Point. Um, I'll show you a picture, let's see if we can get you. There's Barry Newman working. I've got a couple cameras going on, so we'll see if we can show you. So there's Barry Newman working on his 1970 Challenger. So the story behind this, sorry, there's going to be some spoiler alerts in this. The story behind this is that Barry Newman is a former vet, former NASCAR driver, or stock car driver, I guess I should say, and he um, is now working as a professional driver, just transporting vehicles. And he gets a job transporting a Challenger, 1970 Challenger, from Denver to San Francisco. And he bets his friend that he can get there in an abs absurd amount of time, very short amount of time. Um, and so, obviously, what does that mean? It means he's going to drive fast. And so he goes on this journey and he tries to deliver this car in a super record-breaking time. And of course, he runs into law enforcement, he runs into Pentecostals, he definitely meets some local characters. Um, and I, I'll try not to give away the end too much, um, but the end is pretty epic um, and actually ends right here, just 30 miles from where I'm sitting right now, um, down the 128 corridor. Um, and it's a really classic ending. And so, and it, that ending was kind of also mimicked in some later films. Um, yeah, what else can I tell you about the 1971? So the 1971 film, the same tech, um, the, the Vanishing Point, the same tech who built all of the cars for Vanishing Point um, had also worked on Bullet. And so automatically right there, this movie is ingrained into American film heritage with establishing, again, the car chase genre, muscle car genre, um, that we now know as Fast and Furious and all kinds of movies. Um, so that's pretty interesting that Bullet, the same tech, worked on Bullet and Vanishing Point. Pretty cool. Um, oh, another fun fact about the 1971 Vanishing Point is that Delaney and Bonnie um, actually were on screen in this movie. A lot of people may know Delaney and Bonnie from, um, I mean, gosh, Grateful Dead, Eric Clapton. Um, they had so many um, friends in the music business. But anyways, so Delaney and Bonnie are also in the 1971 Vanishing Point, which is super fun. Um, so... That was 1971, Vanishing Point. Again, we've got Barry Newman and his challenger. And um, what else do we have from there? We've also got this Vanishing Point die cast. This is gonna go, these are gonna go into um, our exhibit. These are all getting displayed. So super excited to reveal to you first. Um, so yeah, 1970 Challenger. I have to admit that I'm, I 
was always personally a GTO fan, but the more I watch this movie, these movies, the more I'm a convert to challengers. So, um, so oh, what else do we have? We also have one more object that I'm super excited about, and this is a replica license plate from the 1971 Challenger. Um, or the 70 Challenger in the 1971 Vanishing Point. So this replica license plate is also going to go on display and we are super excited to add this to our exhibit. Um, yeah, so that's that. So now let's talk about the remake. The remake in 1997 um, starred Viggo Mortensen. The storyline changes slightly instead of just making a bet with a friend. Viggo um, is on a race um, as he's delivering his car, uh, this 1970s Challenger again, as he's delivering it, his wife actually goes to the hospital and so he races um, to the hospital to kind of, to try and be with his wife um, who's pregnant and dying. And so that's what um, gives him the need for speed in that film. And so um, that film also really hits on themes of, um, again, indigenous cultures. Instead of running into Pentecostals like he did in the 1971 film, he actually runs into Navajo who help him out. Um, again, we're talking about outlaws and law enforcement, autonomy, freedom, transportation, all of those themes definitely hit home. Um, the other star in the 1997 um, version is Jason Priestley, um, who serves as the alternate from Cleavon Little, um, as the radio DJ who kind of broadcasts Kowalski's story um, to the world. And so, very fun film for sure. Um, made for TV movie. It is available on, as last I checked, for free on YouTube if you want to watch that version. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's awesome. Um, so those are the two, two films, two vanishing points that we're talking about today and that we honor here at the museum. Um, but there's some more that I want to tell you about that pertain to those movies. So at the end of both of them, and in um, the area just up the road from us, um, another famous movie with also a really epic car chase um, that was filmed in 1991 was filmed there. And so that's, I'm talking about Thelma and Louise. And let's see what I've got here. Let's see what we can pull out. So in 1991, Thelma and Louise, um, they also go on, um, they, they start getting chased, right? More themes of law enforcement and outlaws and transportation and independence coming through in that movie as well. So again, um, it was filmed not too far from here, or portions of that movie were filmed not too far from here. I'm not going to open that, sorry. Um, and and um, so in the same place where Vanishing Point scenes were also filmed, which is super cool. It's so rad to see these two films kind of have very different takes, um, but still use the same scenery and, and kind of harp, harp on the same themes. Um, what else can I tell you about these Vanishing Points? Um, one pop culture reference that you may or may not know is the band Audio Slave. Audio Slave, of course, a superstar band made with Chris Cornell and then um, members of Rage Against the Machine. They, in 2002, came out with a song called Show Me How to Live. And the video for that movie um, was apparently influenced by Chris Cornell's love for the 1971 film Vanishing Point. And so what did they do for this movie, Show Me How to, or um, music video, Show Me How to Live? They actually recreated the film as if they were the drivers in the 1970s Challenger. So yet another 1970s Challenger comes through instead of the driver being Barry Newman or Viggo Mortensen. In this one, it's Chris Cornell. And they do the entire movie through this uh, music video. They really show you like the bulk of it. 
um, of course, with their song over overlaid it with and cleave on littles like dance into it, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's actually really well done. Um, the music video I had actually never seen until I started researching this film. Um, apparently, it was banned from MTV because of the ending of this film, and um, they copied the exact same ending um, in the music video. Again, I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers. This video you can definitely watch online. Just Google the Show Me How to Live Audio Slave uh, music video, and you can watch it for yourself. Um, it's definitely a cool video. It shows, again, um, locations that are super close to here. Um, within 30 miles of where I'm sitting right now, there's Dewey Bridge, which has since burned down, is really noticeable, and that's like five miles from here, um, all up and down the 128 corridor, which is where we're featured right now, where the museum is located. Um, they're all really shown in the music video, as well as in these movies, obviously. Um, so that's one really cool pop culture reference, and um, I think you know, an unknown or lesser known um, influence from the 1971 Vanishing Point. And a lot of people maybe have seen that video and never even knew that it was based on the movie Vanishing Point. So um, there you go, little tidbit for you. Um, the other thing that is definitely worth mentioning as far as these films and how they've influenced pop culture, we're gonna go to Quentin Tarantino. Um, absolutely one of my most favorite directors you should probably know him from Pulp Fiction, recently came out with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, so many other classics. He um, released a movie in 2007 called Death Proof. And Death Proof is a total tribute to his love of this genre of movies. This American muscle car, car chase genre is, is his, this is his homage to those films. And he definitely names and gives very blatant credit to Vanishing Point um, in the movie Death Proof. Um, so movie Death Proof, like I said, he didn't, he wanted it to be a total tribute. So he didn't do any CGI. It was all very traditionally filmed um, using, you know, cars that they actually crashed um, and ca cameras on those cars to capture those images. And so, um, yeah, it's a great movie. Definitely re recommend checking it out. Um, Kurt Russell is a star in it. There's also Rosario Dawson. There's Rose McGowan. There's um, all kinds of oh, girls, actually. Like, there's so many stars in that movie. Um, yeah, it's a great one. Some other, like, again, direct tributes that Tarantino gave in that movie, Kurt Russell's Nova, um, one of the cars that Kurt Russell drives in that film, was directly pulled from the movie Bullet, again, talking about going back to the start of this genre. Bullet, 1968, and then right, right away in 71, Vanishing Point, start of the year. So those two films clearly influenced Tarantino um, to the point that he wanted to make this movie, Death Proof. Um, so Kurt Russell drives a Nova. The, um, the license plate that is on his Nova is from Bullet. Um, the duck ornament on Kurt Russell's Nova is from the movie Convoy. Um, there, later on in the film, Kurt Russell drives a Charger. That Charger is definitely reminiscent of the Charger that's in the 1971 Vanishing Point. Um, that Charger has a license plate from a film called Dar Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry. It's another one that came out um, let's see when, in 74, so three years after Vanishing Point. It's another classic of just racing cars, being independent, doing your thing kind of a, a story. Um, and then, of course, there's one other um, great shout out in Death Proof. Uh, he gives tribute to the original Gone in 60 Seconds. Quentin Tarantino gives tribute to the original Gone in 60 Seconds. Um, and that, that he gives to a um, couple girls and they drive this 72 Shelby Mustang that's inspired by that original Gone in 60 Seconds. Fun fact that I learned today, the um, Eleanor 
um, the original Shelby Mustang in the original Gone in 60 Seconds. It was actually a 71 Shelby Mustang, and it had been modified to fit or look like a 73. So not truly a clear year on, on that Mustang. But. So that's what we're talking about again today and why Vanishing Point is such a cool movie. Even if you've never seen it, it's definitely worth seeking out. Um, we will be showing Vanishing Point in the future, so stay tuned. Be sure to like us, follow us on Facebook and Instagram so that you can get updates on that for when we'll be showing it. Um, that's definitely going to come in the near future. Um, and yeah, again, such a critical movie for story, the story of American filmmaking. Um, again, starting the genre of car crash, car chase, American muscle car movies. After 1971 Vanishing Point came out, um, later that year, in 1971 in July, a movie called Two Lane, ba Two Lane Blacktop came out. Um, and then later in 1971, the film The French Connection, which is very famous for um, car chases, that also came out in 71. Following that, 73 was White Lightning with Burt Reynolds. 74, again, the original gun in 60 seconds, like I mentioned. Um, 74, again, Dirty Mary Crazy Larry, like we talked about. 1976, a film called White Line Fever, and that was also filmed partially in our Moab to Monument Valley area. There's scenes um, there where he's driving through like snowy Monument Valley. Um, that's also a pretty good, good flick. I definitely recommend checking that one out um, as well if you're into this kind of a genre. After 76, um, there was Cannonball with David Carradine. It's in the 70s, that's when we started getting into like Smokey and the Bandit, um, Starsky and Hutch, Charlie's Angels, Dukes of Hazard was 79, in the 80s we moved into Knight Rider. So those, those really, those shows, which I'm sure you recognize some of those, those really were spawned by Vanishing Point and Bullet. And um, so it's such a critical movie for that reason. Um, and so we're super stoked to feature it in our exhibit. Um, so come and see all the new stuff. Um, we're giving tribute to it. Again, be sure to like us, follow us, so that you can um, figure out when we're going to be showing movies like the 1971 Vanishing Point. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to check it out with us personally, just, um, I definitely recommend checking it out, um, however you can, maybe buying the DVD, whatever that looks like. It's definitely a good one, definitely worth watching. Um, I'm going to be posting a little video later, uh, showing me updating our exhibit. We'll do a little time lapse showing you that as well, and then I'll show you, um, a little final final and to what the exhibit looks like. It'll um, give tribute again to not only Vanishing Point, but Thelma and Louise and a couple other great films in our um, museum. Thanks for watching.